Hello, hi, and welcome to the second part of our Unity tutorial series, where we're starting from nothing and we're finishing with uploading a finished product onto some sharing website. We'll see that in the end, not of this video, but of this video series. The last time we downloaded Unity, we installed it, we have everything prepared that we need, and today we are actually going to look into the tool, into the editor, Right, into the uni unity editor that's the one uh, that we have here that we started last time from the unity hub um yeah i'm starting very general right for beginners you don't need to know what any of this is i will explain the most important things for the beginning and while we are developing the project i will get deeper into the single parts of it this video just serves as a 10 maybe 15 minutes short overview of all the different parts that we have the most important ones there are certainly many 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 more features to unity don't be afraid no need um, you will grow into it right most important ones we're going to look at now um, yeah so when you open up unity it looks either like this or it's in a light mode right <laughs> mine is already set to dark mode so the first and most important stuff here on top uh, you've got as in every tool you've got file edit and all that kind of stuff if you need to save file save that's the general stuff I'm not talking about this right now um, the important thing for now is the edit button in edit you have to, you have the standard stuff cut copy and not talking about that um, you've got project settings and you have preferences right project settings and preferences very important for every unity project um, the project settings are only for this one project that we're working on so they're not global if you close uh, unity if you open unity hub and open a new project create a new project the project settings are back to the standard stuff if you reload this project you have the project settings so every project has their own project settings Right, if we go in here, there is uh, which kind of audio does it use? What's the graphics that it uses? And so on and so on. What's the physics system? A lot of things. That's the project settings. For every project, you have to make it new, individual for every project. Then there is the second part, which is the preferences. The preferences are for all unities the same, right? So, so for all projects, they are the same. So if you go to preferences, those are your standard preferences that you want with every uh, project and the most important thing there's different color modes if you if you're color uh, blind or something along those lines um, and there's there's more things the most important thing here in the beginning is the editor theme you have a light mode and you have a dark mode I think unity pre-installs in the light mode which is like pff, I can't even look at it anymore <laughs> it's too bright for my eyes every not every program most programmers actually choose a dark mode um, that has only been made available i think early 2019 so in older versions it is not available yet newer versions it is available in older versions you had to pay for it actually not anymore so choose a dark mode choose a light mode that is your personal preference i definitely prefer my good old dark mode <clears throat> yeah uh next that we have are the so-called assets right the asset management assets those are the objects that you are going to work with those are saved in your project but you can also import assets from other projects i will talk about this in the upcoming videos not too much in detail game object it's a li little bit different than an asset an asset is really a finished object that you can import and export to other projects and so on and so on a game object is a new a brand new game object that you can create and we are going to create you are going to create your first game object now which is a 3d object right um and let's say we are going to work with a capsule right? that capsule in your case should be placed at zero 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 you see that here on the top right that is just a little capsule i will show you how that, how we work with this uh, we can also add a plane right a game object we can create empty game objects those are not visible those don't have a physical behavior they are just empty like a folder you can use for later on or a reference or a parent whatever that is there's many types of objects there's not just those cylinders that i just used you can make a cube uh or 
if you select the object here in the hierarchy, you can delete it, of course, with hitting delete or right, right mouse button delete. That's what I just did with the cube. Um, there's not just 3D objects, there's also 2D objects later on very important for making a user interface, right? User interface, also UI, uh, 2D objects and UI very important for user interface making like buttons, text and that dialogue, all that kind of stuff. We'll talk about that later on. <clears throat> but also more 2D objects like sprites for 2D games all can be found here. There's also effects, there's lighting, there's audio, there's even camera video players um, yeah there's many many objects that you can do create here in unity which are basically blank objects with some properties <clears throat> uh, the next are components this is when you work or when you use already with components uh, where you can add single components to your game object so we have now created this capsule here Right. This capsule has so-called components. Next, very important window. Like those can be added on top here. You see they can have many, many things. Um, those components can be seen here on the right side in the so-called inspector window. This inspector window tells us what the game object that we have created. This here is the game object. In our hierarchy, we see the capsule that I can also rename. I would call this one. Uh, if you slowly click on it twice, you can rename it, right click, rename. I will call this player. You can also select it. And then in the inspector window here on the right side, you can there also give this a name. It's all the same. If I misspell it, you see it on the left side in the hierarchy. It's also changed. It's all the same place. Um, yeah. If you want to select this object, you can either do it from the hierarchy here on the left side. That is your scene hierarchy, whatever that is coming to scenes later on. Uh, that is your scene hierarchy. You can select it there or you can just click on it. If it's an object in your project, you can see it there. Uh, I just clicked on it. I can also click on the light, I click and click on the camera. And you see, they're all a game object here on the left side. And they also have on the right side here, different components. The light, for example, that has been there from the beginning of the project has a light component. The camera has a camera component and an audio listener. So you can also listen to what's in front of the camera, around the camera. The player itself, the... Um, character right the character of the player has also some components the first is a transform every single object has a transform the transform places the game object in your scene in your scene that what we see here in the in the center that's the scene the so-called in your level right in your world uh, that is the location and we get to this the next video um then this one has a mesh filter, it has a mesh renderer, and it has a capsule collider automatically created when we created this capsule object. So those components that we have here are responsible for making this a sphere. What, what's it called? A uh, capsule, right? It's a capsule, right? Those components. We could add more. If I add more components, you will see there is much, much more than I can add. And I will get to a lot of those components throughout the tutorials. Right now, that's all we need. One more component. You see, this is a little gray block. And that gray block is defined by our material, what color it has, right? Every object that you create new has a standard default material, which is this grayish thing. Maybe it looks like this in your case, more grayish. Um, that in the next uh, moment so that is the game object components right we've got our game objects and we have our components what i just did with the game object it used to be shadowy and i deactivated the shadows next important are those uh, those those tools up here you can switch when you are in the scene view you see you have from the start on three different views active or three different windows active <clears throat> you can open more windows you see on the window tab you can open different windows like the scene view that's what we have opened the game view and there's many many more get to those 
when we get to them. The most important one right now is the scene view. The scene view, if you're making a 2D game or a uh, interface, you can click on the 2D button and it switches to a 2D two-dimensional mode where you just see it from like face on. You can't go with different angles, it's just front on. Um, you can activate and deactivate it by clicking on the same button. The next, uh, the next button is the lighting. And if I if this is turned on by being visually a little bit lighter tone, um, you see that the shadows in the project in the scene are actually turned on and off. Most of the times it makes sense to turn it off uh, so you see what's actually going on because you don't have a light there and so it's just a general illumination if you turn it off. Turn it on, you see there's already some lighting in my project and that leads me to the next point. Uh, there's also sound muting, there's also just finishing this. There's some layers you can activate and deactivate. You see, if I deactivate all the layers, that's for example, background, that's the sky box, that's fog and all that. Um, a lot of times it makes sense to deactivate them. You can also individually deactivate them. I will keep them active so we actually see what's going on. There's hidden objects and there's a grid to just know what's the orientation. You can activate them in three dimensions. Okay. Also important for later on, because I know you will mess this up. I know I messed this up in the beginning. There's on the right side here, there's gizmos. Gizmos are, for example, you see the camera gizmo right now and the light gizmo. If you click on this, you don't see them anymore, which sometimes you're wondering, where's my stuff? Where's everything? You can individually turn those on and off. There's a lot of different gizmos, as you can see with this, with this huge list here. Um, Standard-wise, those are 3D icons. So they get smaller the more far away you are. If you deactivate 3D icons, they will stay the same size. So I recommend 3D icons on. You can just make them taller or smaller, however you want. But 3D icons on. That's gizmos. Keep them on most of the time. That's uh, very important. <clears throat> yeah. Which leads to the next, to the uh, standard controls here in our editor. The uh, standard controls, as I already Oh, let's actually finish with the with the other window, sorry. Um, we don't just have our scene view. This is where you're going to add components. This is where you're going to be programming. Then you have the game um, window open from the beginning on. And if you open the game window, you see I can't do anything in here. The game window right now is seen from the camera. So if you see the camera, if you click on the camera, you can see down here, that's what the main camera sees. And that is exactly the game window. So when you click on the play button on the top to run your project, when you click on the play button, the game window will automatically open. And right now we don't have anything programmed, so I can't do anything, right? Doesn't matter what I do, can't do anything. Later on, of course, that will be important. That's your game window. Um, yes, <clears throat> there's more to it. We'll get there. Last important window that we see is down here. Right? Down here, we've got the project window. You see the project tab here is activated. And the project tab is a list of all your um, assets, of all your assets that you have in your project. An asset is just a component that you have in your project. Like right now, I have scenes, for example. Scenes is a folder, and in this folder, I have a sample scene, and the sample scene has lighting settings. Um, so that asset folder is just really your project folder. The very interesting thing is if you right click and say show an explorer, you will see an asset folder. If you open that up, you see this is just the windows folder. If I create an object here, for example, a new folder, you will see that also shows up in unity. If I delete that folder in unity, you will see that also deleted the folder in the window system. So it's really just an overview of everything that is in your project. <clears throat> yeah, depending on your taste, you can, of course, zoom in just down here. There's a slider right behind me. There's a slider. You can zoom in and zoom out depending on how you like it. There's also going to be a preview of all your objects, um, but that we will get later on. Everything that you will download and stuff will go down here in the assets folder in your project view. Right now it's pretty empty because we have an empty project. Those components, the light, the player and the camera, they are not in there yet because we're not going to reuse them. They are only active in this one scene. If I want to reuse them, of course I would put, for example, the player, I can drag 
and drop it down here in my assets. Now I could reuse that player as many times, just dragging and dropping into my project as many times as I want. Uh, I will delete the prefab. Deleting the prefab fab will lead to everything that is referenced will be red, right mouse button on it, and say prefab unpack. Those down here, the assets are also called prefabs, prefabricated items that you can reuse as many times as you want. That's down here. There's also console down here that will give you error messages or later on for debugging, very, very useful. So that's been 15 minutes already. Just the last couple of things, very quick to the controls. You see me already wandering around here, right? uh, wandering around and that, how the camera control is. I will make actually a second video on this because I wanna keep it at 15 minutes-ish. That was the rough, rough, rough overview of your Unity editor. Right? All that I just mentioned, those are the basics. There's way more deep stuff, but those are the basics. If you at some point mess up your layout, you can drag and drop those windows as you want, right? I can mess this view up like completely. So it just looks like crap. You can also take a single window and just put it on another screen here, for example. I've got it on my second screen or make it just float around everything possible, however you like to have your editor. If you mess it up once, <laughs> you have on the top right, you have um, which layout do you wanna use? There's defaults, there's two by three, there's standard defaults that are pretty common. I have saved my standard layout, that is how I usually have it, but we are starting with the standard layout that looks like this. Hey, that looks a little bit different than it was before. No, default, default layout, not the default layout, that's this one, good. Okay, that was a bit much talking about just the editor, just the Unity editor. Sorry, that actually took way longer than I thought, uh, but the most important components were mentioned. The next time we're actually looking in creating objects, working with the uh, scene view, where we are actually walking around, not walking around the character, but we can actually manually place the character, change things in our scene, add components, the basics there, right? So, and work with the camera and that stuff. That's in the next video. I already talked way too much. I am sorry. Uh, if you've got questions, just leave them or remarks, leave them in the comments below uh, so everyone can see them. Uh, if you like this, if this is any helpful, if you want me to continue, just leave a like. Don't forget to subscribe. And I will see you uh, in the next video. Thank you for watching. Stay safe and healthy and have a nice day. Bye-bye.